please settle down. That would be really appreciated. Hello, everybody. Salaam alaikum. Can I just remind you all to either switch off your phones or put them on silent now. Um, welcome to this session. Uh, it's a very interesting book uh, we're talking about today. It's Asad Qureshi's 165 Days Prisoner of the Taliban. Now, um, some of you might have attended another session, which was also a hostage memoir, Shabazz Tasir's book. And this is also a harrowing account of captivity in 2010. Um, so we will just talk a little bit about it. We've only got half an hour, so we're going to go straight to the point. Um, I'm Ambar Khairi. I'm a journalist. Um, I've been with the BBC Newsline Herald. Asad Qureshi, who's the author of the book, is a documentary filmmaker. And uh, he has written the book, and it's his account. With us also is Ahmed Jamal, a.k.a. Allu, who is uh, also a filmmaker and a media person who's been at the forefront of producing multicultural content in Britain since the 80s, I would say. So, um, and you were part of the, the team, and just fate would have it, you got sick and you went back. And, uh, yeah. So, um, Asad, if we could start with basically, um, it's a difficult thing to write a memoir like this because it's an extremely harrowing experience you've been through. So how did you come to this point to be able to write it? What was the process? How was the decision? And how, was it, did it revisit your trauma? Uh, thank you for coming, everybody. I appreciate it, and I'm honored that you're here to listen to me. Um, Amber, I felt the story had to be told. There was no cathartic uh, intention or anything. I felt this, this story has to be told because there's so many people who are doing these bad things and somebody has to wake up and say, look, this is what's going on. And um, they, these people just create so much trauma for innocent people. Uh, how, how difficult was it to come to this stage after, you know, this being in captivity for this long? My main problem was uh, concentrating on writing the book. I think I must have sp spent thousands of hours just playing um, solitaire on the computer because I just couldn't concentrate used to take months to write a chapter and I think it's, the writing of the book took about five years but it was once I put my mind to it I could bring out the um, text but I didn't feel it was a dark place to go but I wasn't thinking of it as it's going to help me get over it because I've, I'm over it I didn't realize you know I, th I think of it as an adventure now but at, you know uh, that at the time it was difficult to escape mentally from that place, as it were, which is what then I realized I, I have to do as a form of survival. Okay, that's interesting, because the PTSD would stay with you for a long time, really. And the book, I mean, do you say, think it was cathartic, or it went, you had to revisit a lot of things, well, which you... I, what was the easy part was I had kept a diary in captivity. So once you re write an incident, and even though they took them away from me, I remembered better because I'd written it once, so I was rewriting it. Regards um, cathartic, no, I didn't see it like that. I just had it in my mind, this story needs to be told. That was all I thought. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, uh, Asad was abducted in March of 2010, and 165 days later was lucky to come out alive in September. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, it's, it's really a story worth reading because it gives a, a picture of how murky things were. You really didn't know uh, who was doing what, who was in control of what. And I think at one point you thought the abductors were actually the ISI and you were sort of relieved to find out, no, it's not them. But you had this thought that they might be the abductors. Then at the same time, you know, it's this murky, it's basically criminal gangs doing abducting and calling themselves religious militants. So there's stages where the Afghan Taliban and the Al-Qaeda are the good guys, 
because they're against abductions and ransoms and they helped in the handing over when you were released. Well, yes, in my story, Al-Qaeda played the good guys in handing me over to my family. The, um, the TTP are criminals. There's no other agenda for them, I think. They're criminals. Mm. Yeah, and, and this comes out. I mean, it was basically an, a commercial enterprise also. One group would abduct, they'd sell you on to another group, and this went on. But it was, a, a, I mean, the, the murkiness is great. because There was two people with you, Khalid Khwaja and uh, Colonel uh, Imam. And they had basically been linked with the Mujahideen and the ISI, and, and they were both kept and murdered by the abductors. Yes, yes. But again, it was, the whole thing was very murky of what was going on, who was in touch with whom, and it's a post Lal Masjid scenario Correct. in which there were groups pushing one thing, there was enormous amount of suspicion. Now, do you think, I mean, it was a kind of a fateful day, it's a dramatic story. They could have turned back at a certain point and they were advised to turn back. And one person said, no, we'll go on. I've arranged everything, and then they were abducted. So that turning point, do you ever think back to that? Many times, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if only we turned right instead of left, we would have been okay. Yeah, yeah. You see, on your way back from Kohat, there's a fork in the road. No, no sorry, on the way back from Bandung, there's a fork in the road, left for Kohat, right for Islamabad. And that's where it all took place. I wanted to turn right, he wanted us to, to go left, and I said, okay, it's four days, I'll be home in four days. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's fate, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. I mean, also fate that you yes. were not with them and you got sick and you had to go for surgery, Hannah? Yeah, a little bit of the context of what happened is that we had done a film for the BBC's panorama about the, called the Battle of Swat Valley, and a lot of the troubles in Pakistan at the time began with that because when the Taliban were kicked out of Swat, this area, Waziristan, was like a stronghold of all kind of people who were in Afghanistan before. So that's why it was murky, there was every intelligence agency in the world was there. And we were promised an interview with the Haqqani network. And when we went there, we were told to go back, but unfortunately, <laughs> the situation was that we were told that it's been sorted out, so they went in. So the whole thing was like they were renegades from different parties, so we didn't know who was with whom. And that was the context of when the Pakistan army decided to attack. So we did a story before that about South Waziristan, yeah. but this was the second part called the North Waziristan. Mm -hmm. And it was so, a no yeah. man's land, basically. At that time, the army hadn't taken action like, like Shabazz was describing what was happening in uh, Miran Shah and all. They were all, everybody from Uzbeks to Chechens to uh, Somalis and everybody was there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you walked into that, into that mess. So, in um, going back to the book, I mean, you, you are the protagonist, basically. But you saying that hero is your brother, who oh, was yes. actually yes. negotiating yes. and uh, yes. managing everything on behalf of the family. Yes. Definitely. Yes. And a lot of the story is how that happened and yes. the, the communications that were received and yes. the, the trauma for the family as well. Yes. So I don't know if Farooq Saab would like to say anything about that here or maybe later. But maybe later. Maybe later. It was, uh, um, how difficult was it for you to reconstruct that in the book? Did you have to go back to the emails? Did you? I, I consulted the, some of the emails. Uh, there was uh, m my brother's uh, colleague, Nudrat. She kept some notes. And because I had compiled so many, I, I kept a diary. So uh, I had, even though twice, uh, well, the diary started when the production started. And so I went all along, and then they gave me writing books in captivity, which I filled everywhere, like put the page down the sides, all over. And only I would have known how to decipher all that. 
Then one day they took them away and tore them up and slapped me around, it was difficult. Then I think on another day they upset me a lot and to placate me they gave me another book to write in. Which, um, so because I had that information and I could sort of, I wrote it in a style that um, told the story the way it was and what they had said, hence it stayed in my mind. And, um, it was just like from memory I was writing. So I didn't really feel um, it was cathartic in that sense, you know, as I said before. It, it, I, said, I felt it had to be told, the story. It, and, and, uh, see, I, was, well, I shouldn't have been there. It was a plot for Colonel Imam and Khalid Khwaja. They were wanted by those people. Essentially for Khalid Khwaja, though, because even Colonel Imam came along at the last minute. Last minute, yes. No. Now, Khalid Khwaja had um, engendered a lot of distrust, I think. Also, I think he was kind of on the CIA watch list. Okay. There was a case of five uh, Pakistani Americans, or of Pakistani heritage. Uh, they were caught in Sargoda and he was fighting their case. And he said to me, he will not talk to anybody below the rank of, I think, Secretary of State about this case. Mm -hmm. So they were, he was already torn in their side, you know. Okay. But yeah, 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 because he, um, he was an ISI operative, before that he was in the Air Force, and then um, he got very involved with the missing persons, the people That's who right. were being yes. disappeared. Yes. But even there, there was some distrust with the other people who were, because they weren't sure who he was working. Yeah. But it is all extremely murky. I mean, you know, uh, to read this, you will understand that things are not simple, they're not black and white. Because for your release also, I think you had to go to various jihadi elements. And the person who kind of oversaw that was basically, uh, you know, Kashmiri jihad ke bane and yeah. you know, with the madrasa and everything. And you had to go that route because somebody approached your brother and said, I think this person can help you. Yes, yes. And then there was this whole process. So it's uh, very, kind of non-clear, it's, it's a, must have been a minefield to navigate oh, yes. and you must have learnt of this later. Oh, yes, yes. But I must say a good turn, if you do a good turn to somebody, it will come back and pay you back. So this person who approached my brother and said he can help, he had gone to my brother's office and said I need some money, so he was given some money. And sometime later, he read about me in the newspaper and led for my brother to the man who helped negotiate. So a good turn does pay. <laughs> a good turn does pay, and I think yes. in Pakistan, personal contact yes. will give you a lot of mileage. Yes. You know, we have a lot of people in the world, so that is also an uh, interesting one. Uh, Alu, any thoughts on? I. Uh, when Asad started writing the book, I was a bit skeptical because he had never written a book and it, it was challenging, <laughs> challenging for him as well. But I must say, when I read the book, it was a riveting read and I finished it in about, I think, two, two or three days, um, although it's quite a thick book. But um, it's, uh, it, it's, the way it's set out, it's like a, a, dra a very dramatic scene. So I think you've read it too. And mm -hmm. that's why I think people should actually read the book because it, it, it is a very good read. But, I mean, it's an awful story. You know, I mean, two people lost their lives. But the good thing is the people that we were particularly responsible for, which is Asad and his assistant, they came back safe at, at great cost, emotional and otherwise, to other people. But it is, you're right, it's a, it's a harrowing story, but it, it's very interesting. And there are details because... Uh, being a, a clean freak, as you describe yourself, <laughs> yes, extremely yes, fastidious yes, yes. and a vegetarian, oh, oh, oh. and being mm. in custody, there was, I mean... I was terrified of creepy crawlies. They just, and one day, uh, I think it was a um, cockroach that crawled up my face, mm. and I could feel the hairy legs, mm. or we used to be chained all together from the legs, um, I was chained to Rustam, my assistant, and Rustam was chained to Colonel Imam. So in the middle of the night, I'd go like this because there's a 
mosquito going past, you know. So I pulled Rustam Sien and he's pulled Kirill Imam, so they're all up and then signs and is one mosquito and he's up. So that was a problem for me. I couldn't bear mosquitoes and then I was stung twice by a bee and I learned that, uh, you know, the shackles have this metal uh, um, pin in it and Rustam rubbed it on quickly and it cured it right away. So something I learned. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, the weaknesses I had or hang-ups of cl cleanliness, creepy crawlers, all that kind of stuff, it was difficult. And then not being able to wash as much as I want to. You know, mm -hmm. That was very difficult. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then the, the mental torture, basically. Yes. The beatings right. as well, the mental torture. Oh, yes. Um, the biggest worry was obviously my family. You know, mm -hmm. how they're coping. Which was, uh, you know, th 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 that was what kept me alive. It keeps you alive, but at, at the same time, there must have been a sense of guilt that because of you, they are going through yes, this very much, trauma. Yes, very much, very much. It's, um, I was only saying to somebody yesterday how much um, worry I've caused my parents for my, because of my adventures. You know, going off to film in difficult places. Like many years ago, I went to Mount Everest to film me. And while I was there, I f fell asleep near a Oh, what do they call those? You know, near a glacier. And my mother came in my dream and she just woke sort of just woke me up. Because there, if you go to sleep, that's the end. You, get, hi yeah. you get hypothermia, yeah. etc. And she woke me up. And basically, by remote, she saved my life. She mm. rescued me. Mm. So these are the thoughts I had in captivity that, uh, you know, I couldn't possibly do anything because. She saved me once, now I owe it to her too. Even though it was easy to, I, I know how to do hang on, hangman's knot, to hang myself, mm -hmm. that'd be it. I'd, be, mm -hmm. I'd have escaped them, but I would have left the uh, pain for my mum and dad. Even though when they said, you know, we're gonna kill you, I said, well, if you're going to kill me, don't behead me, mm -hmm. shoot me. Because, you know, my mum won't be able to face a headless, you know, son. Mm -hmm. So I have to say that and make and that decision. They conveyed that to your brother, that it, he's told us that he doesn't yeah. want to be beheaded and he wants to be shot, which is a pretty harrowing detail yeah, to give yeah, someone yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So I saw you at uh, Shabazz Tassir's talk as well. Okay. Right. So um, what he was talking about, how much did that resonate with you? A lot, because uh, the captors behave as if they're the tough guys and, oh yeah, they've got guns, we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I think behind all that facade, they're pretty much cowards and stupid. Any, but anybody who has a gun will behave as if they're the tough guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was nothing upstairs. No, no logic, no nothing. But just brainwashed people. Mm -hmm. Al Alu, do you want to come in with, at, at all? No, I, I just think, apart from all that, what, knowing us personally, the small things were bigger torture. <laughs> yes. like, getting food and sharing with four people yeah. and the other guy that was with Asad was not good in hygiene so he had just picked up a rat and there was an argument that you have to wash, wash your, your hands. hands. And that was your assistant. Yeah. Yes. So he's like, oh my God, he's been handling my camera all this time. Yeah. No, no, and, and, no and, yeah. and, and because yeah. for someone like Asad who's incredibly into cleanliness and having his own food or his own things, mm -hmm. they used to give a, a bowl and he all had to eat from that bowl. You know, so, and you had to eat because, you know, otherwise you'd starve. So those little things, I mean, those would weigh me out rather than, and then as a result of that, he got whipped with chains. You know, these are chains that come off, off a truck's fan belt. Yeah. So it's like serious. Uh, so torture. often when you come out of this kind of experience and you've been a hostage, I mean, it's, the trauma continues. So how, and you know, relationships break up, it's very difficult to settle back into your old life. How did you find that? I mean, how difficult was that coming back to what was your old life, your real life? Well, I, I still say that I got over it faster or sooner than most people would have thought. Because it's, it's, it's an after dinner story. You know, it's one or two people who've known me before, it's, oh, you're much more angrier these days. And I said, no, I, same old, me, it's not at the forefront of my mind this incident. It happened what, quite a while ago now. So 
I don't think about it like that. It's okay, we've written a book, we're planning to go further, but that's about it. But it changed you. No, I don't think so. No? No, 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 no. Here's my brother asking. Do you think it's changed me? I think it's, it's men or down <laughs> Yeah. No, but that's yeah. age. <laughs> no, yeah. the funny thing is we had started a film about the um, re-education of the children who were caught in the SWAT operation due to... Suicide, uh, potential suicide, suicide bombers. bombers. Uh, which, which was re later made into a film with the BBC show called uh, Diffusing Human Bombs. And uh, I'd got the money for it, and, uh, but Asad was in, 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 you know, yes, a hostage. So I had to wait. And, but I knew that once he comes out, uh, he won't be able to do it. He, can't, he shouldn't do it. He can't go back. The guy released from the, I mean, I'm saying his resilience, and um, he released from that captivity, came to Pakistan within three or four days, uh, came to London within three or four days. Next month, he went back to Malakand to film these guys. Now that's... I mean, that is, yeah. from, you know, it's, it's, but he, as he's saying, he didn't let it affect him. Yeah. And that was a, something that happened. And that's a kind of a defiance of the yeah, fear. That is, so. Filmmakers are like soldiers. We have to do that job. You have to be at the front yes, line. Yes, we have to do the job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've got very little time because this was a really short session, but if there's anybody in the audience who would like to <coughs> ask us about the book and his experience, uh, Rashid, um, we don't have a mic here. Uh, I'm trying to speak as loud as I can. I'm just trying to recall, because my memory is not what it used to be, this incident Yes. 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 This is correct. Yes, sir. So that's another so murky. But this is an, uh, Rashta, this is another murky aspect of this thing because I did talk to Hamid Mir about this and he said there was a phone call, it was doctored, it was about me talking about uh, the missing people and so that went on and you know I think there were several court cases but he also says that Khalid Fajr's wife wrote a book and in that she categorically says <coughs> that Hamid Mir had nothing to do with this. Uh, may yeah, I just yeah, but he says parts of that were from a conversation he'd had with uh, a, a minister, I think. And that was a briefing about them asking him about Khalid Khwaja and the context of the missing campaign. May, may, may I just say that Declan Walsh has written a book about Pakistan. I think it's called The Five Pillars of Pakistan. And in that, he has had Hamid Mir's voice forensically checked, and it checks out it is Hamid Mir. Recently. It is, the thing is, everything is so murky, and I still say it's very murky, because I don't think necessarily a journalist would have an interest in actually doing that. And also, at that time, Hamid Mir was extremely unpopular with the authorities. Uh, Hamid Mir uh, believes that Khalid, because of Khalid Khwaja, he was fired from the Daily Osaf, and that was the revenge. Sorry? Hamid Mir used to work for the Daily Osaf. Mm -hmm. And he believes because of Khalid Khwaja, he was fired. So he had an axe to grind with Khalid Khwaja. Okay, wheels within wheels. Mm -hmm. yeah. So any other... Um, I just, uh, if you could... I just wanted to, to know, kind of, what was your family response reading your book? Just because then uh, there was this one thing that you came oh, back yes, yes. you, you had these that you actually read. The my detail. brother sitting in front of you, he refuses to read the book. My older sister won't read the book. Uh, in my family, my father read some of it. But before he passed away, he said to my mom, and this is uh, uh, that the one child we had no hope in has written a book. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how I end the book. So, you know, he read it, um, and he was very, very, very proud of me. And he was a bibliophile, and you know, if he says okay, it's okay. 
and uh, others um, you know, in my family, because it's like this. I watched the film, because I was there. They read the book, because they didn't know, it's not, they're not knowing how difficult it is for them. And I can appreciate that, that you know, they suffered more than me. This is the truth, because of the, not, the imagination takes you places. Whereas my imagination, when I was bored, I'd think of all the flowers, I could think of all the countries in the world, all the capitals, all the actors, filmmakers, to keep my mind busy. And then I would always have a, every night there'd be a trial. I'm the judge, and then I have George W. Bush, Musharraf, Condoleezza Rice, and I'm trying them every night. And then I would punish them, and the next night I would have the same trial again. <laughs> it's true. And this went on for days and days and days, many, because I had to keep my head busy. I had to escape that, sorry, that particular place. And the only way to do it is to keep your mind sane, even though that, that's my anger getting out. So glad Musharraf died, I hope. Whoever's his fan here, I'm so sorry, but I was in there because of him. He led the war on terror, and that's why it all happened. And in this, when you would... Uh, no, when, no, when you, I stand by it. No, no, it's an opinion. So, <laughs> yes. uh, but in, and when you do this and you know, play all these scenarios to keep your mind working, as a filmmaker, did you use different angles and different edits? Or I was the same kind well, of actually, a trial Actually, as a, as a or filmmaker, I was worried sick that the film we'd started filming called Diffusing Human Bombs, I was praying, I hope, to get out of it there to finish it. Hmm. I just didn't want anybody else to touch my work. So your mind was on the next thing? Well, okay. <laughs> when we were released or handed over to Al-Qaeda, and I asked these guys, who are you, what do you do? And they said, we do this feasibility, we are warriors of God, as it were. I said, oh, really? And he said, I'm with Al-Qaeda. I said, well, do you think I can make a film about, about you guys? <laughs> I haven't got home yet. <laughs> And he said, oh, well, we have to ask higher authority. And I'm sure they were talking about Bin Laden. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but yeah. yes, we are ready for the next job. Yeah, looking for the next story, <laughs> next school, next yes, interview. Yes, 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 Any, yes. Uh, yeah. So after you got out and after everything, and I know you moved on to the next project, which I think my voice is pretty bad. Thank you. Um, uh, OK. So after you moved on, and I know it's as Okay, so it's difficult to process the trauma you've been through. Um, and moving on to the next project is good because it keeps your mind busy. But there are points in our time that something happens and you go back into that trauma. How have you been able to cope with that? I'm not going to ask you about that, but how have you been able to cope with what that? What you're talking about is like um, intrusive thoughts or trigger points, yes, triggers, okay? yeah. but I am very logical, and I tell myself, it's over, it's in the past, but before we get to that point, there's closure. In fact, the day I came home, my brother said, these guys won't see the new year, and this was September, and uh, two weeks after I was released, they were killed. They, were those they killed each other as well. Oh, yes, kind of, but, so this guy who was a leader and his assistant, they were abducted by Hakim Ullah Masood's group. They had um, their legs broken, their rifle butts. They were shot in the face so many times. They were beyond recognition. That was closure. And they said to me, we'll see you in heaven. And in fact, I thought I'll see you in hell. And they're gone. It's over. You know, it was so clean cut. But I don't think about it like that. They lost. So you had closure. So that yeah, trauma, yes, yeah, yeah. within so that, two weeks. So that trauma was processed through the closure. I, I, I think your faith helps you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, I think we, this PTSD thing is a lot more acute or talked about in the West more. I'm sure it exists in our society, but people don't talk about it. But I had things to do. Can't live in the past. You've got to move on. You've got to do things. <laughs> And you know, so I mean, this book was a, more difficult to write than the actual time because people expect something from you. Like Alu said, you know, I'd never written a book and he didn't know what was going to be coming, but he, his compliment is the best because if he can say it's good, then it's good. 
So it's a harrowing read. It's a harrowing read, but it's an. Oh, sorry, one more question. And uh, last question because. or not, but anyhow, I was in the Air Force and Khalid Khoja was at the academy with me and he was my s our senior and uh, uh, seniors, some of them are, you know, they bully you a lot, they punish you a lot. He was quite mild. Oops. <laughs> he was mild by comparison and uh, uh, I didn't meet him after we commissioned many years because I was on the engineering side and he was a pilot and all. But uh, nothing in his cadet life would have, uh, you know, prepared me for I'm not privy to exactly what happened, etc. But, but he was very mild and I, I mean I would never have imagined him to become so, uh, uh, such a, uh, extremist in, in ways that I read and heard about. It's just something that uh, I just wanted to share. Yeah. 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 I was only saying this to my brother this morning. There's only one person I know who didn't like the book. And that one person was traveling with Farouk everywhere during this incident. And he asked me, he said, well, why have you gone out of captivity and written about other things? I said, well, if I didn't, the book would have only been 12 pages long. You see? Other than that, very positive feedback. Uh, well, they've just said that they've, they've liked it, it's very detailed, um, and that's again because I had already written it once, as it were. Um, I've just had good f feedback, which I'm very p happy to say. That's good. Well, it's a very interesting read, and um, it's harrowing, but we know it has a happy ending, so that's a good thing. <laughs> so, I mean, I encourage you to read it, especially if you are interested in this recent history of Pakistan and this whole militancy because uh, it just gives you an interesting picture of how complicated and how complex those scenarios were with all these jihadi groups and, and, and you know, this political confusion, this Lal Masjid post, you know, like various groups working against each other in Islamabad, various groups operating in, and the linkages. So, yeah. So and, and lastly, we do plan to make a feature film of the story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, well, the filmmaker, definitely. Yes, yes. Anyway, thank you very much, thank Asad Qureshi. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And with that, I was the last session of the day. Thank you everyone for being here. I'd like you now to move towards the closing ceremony that will take place. And yeah, have a lovely day. <laughs> <laughs>